Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today it's Sunday, so we are taking a look at another cool new product. This is something that I think has a conceptual link back to the, some of the suppressors of the 1940s, but it's actually being made with really cool cutting-edge technology today. These are a pair of PTR vent suppressors. A vent 2 in 9mm and a vent 3 in 5.56. Now you may not think of PTR as a suppressor company. This, yes, this is the same PTR that's probably best known for making roller delayed HK guns, HK style guns. But they've decided to get into the suppressor market, and they've done it with a really cool big splash with these things. So I first saw these at SHOT Show. They seemed really cool, but it was SHOT Show, range day, it's very difficult to really find out anything for sure in the limited amount of time and the bustle and noise that's there. So I have a pair of these in hand now. We've done a little bit of shooting, which we'll get to in a moment, but I have, I'm excited to continue using these a bunch and do some more extensive testing with them. Now, what makes them cool is, to my mind, they're essentially a throwback to, well, conceptually a throwback to like the, the grease gun suppressors and the 22 caliber high standard suppressors that used essentially wire mesh rolled up into a cylinder as a way to absorb heat out of the exhaust gases from a firearm. Uh, this big roll of wire mesh was essentially, sort of think of it like a metal sponge, and gas would propagate through this sponge, slowing down and significantly cooling down as it did. Well, what PTR has done with these is they've used a, a process or a technology they call PIP, or Purposely Induced Porosity, where they have, first off, these are completely 3D printed out of titanium, and because they're being 3D printed they can actually print this as essentially a very fine titanium sponge, doing the same sort of thing that that old wire mesh design did. So, and they've incorporated some other design elements that we'll get to in a moment, but essentially what they've done is create a suppressor that does a really efficient job of pulling heat out of the exhaust gases, and also venting gas out the front of the suppressor and maintaining your standard chamber pressure, so residual chamber pressure. So they have uh, a suppressor that's both very light, very quiet, and doesn't blow gas back into the face of the shooter. And that, that last factor has become something of really much more significant concern of late than it ever used to be before. Uh, special Forces teams that are training more and more and more with suppressors now, you know, over the last five to ten years, are finding significant health problems in the long term with, uh, you know, massive exposure to blowback gas out of firearms that is, that's really amplified by a lot of early style suppressors. And so, uh, in fact, the, the suppressor requirements for the new US Army XM7, should it be fully adopted, one of the requirements is that the suppressor cannot cause any additional gas venting in the shooter's face. This is another can that's developed to do that sort of thing, or rather not to do it. So let me show you up close because there's some really cool, like they call this vent for a reason, and I want to show you why, because the, there's so much cool tech in this that all comes out of the 3D printing capability that we have now. All right, so this is the 5.56 can. Suppressors usually really aren't that much to look at. Um, as of this filming, these are only available with a direct thread adapter, but they are uh, 1 and 3 eighths by 24 thread pitch, so in theory any sort of standard hub mount should work, but I don't have I don't have a different one to try. So they come with this. According to the website, without the adapter, this is 11.5 ounces. My scale actually says 11.3, and it goes up to 13.5 with the mount uh, included in there. So it's not like a ridiculously insanely light suppressor, but it is light by, like it's on, very much on the light end of 5.56 rifle suppressors. It is full auto rated, it's fine for short barrels. Um, if we look inside there, you can see this, like the really cool design elements that come from this being a monolithic 3D printing. But what we can see most of all are up here, these are a series of vents, as the name implies. There's six of them around, and there is a porosity, that purpose-induced porosity, purposely induced porosity, is visible inside the center of these vents. Those vents actually propagate back you can see three of them right there, right there, and right there. 
at the back end of the can. So what it's allowing gas to do is come into this initial expansion chamber, and instead of getting stuck there and having only the central uh, core of the suppressor to vent out through, and then inevitably uh, raising you know, the amount of gas that gets that's still pressurized in the system when the bolt opens and blowing it into the shooter's face. Instead, that gas can vent through those three pathways out through three of these. The other three are connected to a similar sort of vent on the inside. I don't know exactly where the second one begins, but it's inside the baffle stack. And then you can see they also have it in this radial pattern around the center bore. So the whole purpose here is to slow down uh, and cool down gases while still letting them out of the can, reducing the internal pressure of the can enough that by the time the bolt opens, you're not actually blowing gas back in the shooter's face. So, uh, all right, there are some downsides to these as well. First off, they're expensive. The 5.56 and 7.62 cans are $1,500, and the uh, 9mm is like 75 bucks cheaper, so essentially the same price, really. Uh, and then there is the issue of cleaning. This is something that a lot of people brought up after seeing these at SHOT Show, and that is, okay, you've got all this little tiny porous, essentially titanium foam, how long does it take before that is completely full of carbon and the suppressor uh, goes from being really great performance to being pretty crap performance? And the answer is PTR actually recommends on 9mm pistol carbines uh, cleaning them every 1000 rounds and on rifles uh, every 1500 rounds. And that cleaning process involves either soaking the can in solvent or, even better, uh, using solvent in an ultrasonic cleaner for a period of I don't remember the exact time frame, it's like half an hour in a, an ultrasonic cleaner uh, to get rid of the carbon buildup. But there, yes, there will indeed be carbon buildup inside there. You can see the full cleaning instructions, the maintenance schedule that's recommended at PTR's website. So um, if you don't, if you want something that is totally maintenance free, well, this is, that's a trade-off um, that this isn't maybe a good candidate for. But if you're willing to put in a little maintenance, uh, the claims on this are pretty impressive, so let's take it out to the range. Uh, we'll do some shooting with the 9mm Vent 2 on what I think should be about the the most serious test of it. This is a simple blowback uh, 9mm AK. Uh, it's a Kalashnikov KP9, but simple blowback so there's nothing that is keeping this bolt closed longer to reduce the amount of gas blowback. And when I put other cans on this, it does blow a significant amount of noxious gas back in my face. We got some standard 115 or 124 grain ammo, supersonic ammo. That's pretty cool. I'm getting just a little bit of spackling of powder debris or something, but no actual discernible gas. It's pretty unusual. It's an indication that the flow through nature is in fact flowing through instead of building up increasing chamber pressure and blowing more gas back in my face. Got it. That's impressive, honestly. I was not expecting it to actually be like totally really nice. Now, for my next trick, I have a magazine of 147 grain subsonic magtech. Let's see how it handles subs. That's still almost no gas. Tiny little perceptible bit on the subs. They are going to have a higher chamber pressure because they're going slower, I suspect, or higher residual chamber pressure. But that's remarkable. It's a lightweight can. The flow through properties seem really quite good. They're If you couldn't tell, I came away from that range trip really quite impressed. Uh, very happy with how these performed. I am looking forward to doing a bunch more shooting with them, both in 9mm and also especially getting this 556 onto a nice lightweight AR build where I think it'll make a really good companion 
tan um, to a nice short light gun. Now if you're interested in the exact uh, decibel reduction of, of these, I don't have the tools to measure that at this point. However, one of the best resources for that sort of thing, Pew Science, has done a report on the Vent 2, that's the 556 can. Um, I will link to their report on it in the description text below, check them out. Um, they, they frankly found its performance to be excellent. And so and they've, they've got the tools and the procedures to do that sort of thing much better than I do right now. So highly recommend checking out their work as well. Uh, full disclosure, these were both provided to me by PTR. I didn't pay for them, but I also don't have any uh, obligation to say anything one way or the other about them. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.